yes. man in front of everybody. Yeah. They know. That but idea is reflected in what Farrakhan has done in Chicago. Recently, I went to Chicago. And he has a masjid out there called Masjid Marion. And those people who donated from $500 and up, they have their name on the back of a seat. Uh, they have the Musella downstairs in the lower level, along with uh, uh, gold faucets and various other uh, things to attract um, people. <clears throat> but on the back of these gold seats, auditorium style with the uh, rostrum there, made out of um, marble, plaque, etc. We have these um, people's names on the back of the seat who donated over two thousand dollars, five hundred, etc., 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 etc. This kind of idea is an idea, and then the dome is a large, beautiful, very majestic. Uh, the uh, this is masjid. It formerly was the, um, the Temple of Islam in Stony Brook Island, uh, okay. in Stony Brook Avenue, out there in. Uh, so they go there from Warfi Muhammad. They, yeah, they go there from Warfi Muhammad, and they've made some improvements on there um, in terms of that that idea. Right. But that idea, I, you know, to get people to um, to find a way to to make them pay more than they got. You know, they used to tell them back. And you mentioned the Nation of Islam. Right. Close the door. No one gets out until right. we get ten thousand right. dollars. <laughs> we're building. We're having a jet for Muhammad. Right. We're building a hospital. With, you know, this kind of idea here, and at the same time, the money was going into who knows where. Uh, so uh, with the freedom for an individual to give because he wants to give, and I think we're talking about leadership. Because in New York, New York is the most competitive um, area in the world. Every Your best minds is in New York. So when we look at New York, we're not making progress. We complain, complain, complain. But we have to understand the competition that we're up against here in New York. Recently, I was in Baltimore, and they made a beautiful masjid in Baltimore. You know, on, on Islamic Way, they have a, a whole avenue called Islamic Way, and every all of the members, two hundred and fifty members, have their license plates with it says American Muslim Community. And like, I mean, it's a show of uh, unity and cohesiveness and progress, and they've been able to develop businesses and a whole street. Um, I was in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and I saw uh, the masjid down there. They built the masjid from the ground up, you know. Um, I think anywhere we go, you could probably build a masjid someplace other than in New York. It seems to be very difficult. And again, we're talking about leadership, um, the need for leadership in, in the New York area. In the month of masjids, he was talking about $300, which is true, basically. Okay, even some people right now just go to Juma. Because it's obligatory, but you don't see them in any other activities. They're not involved with prison services. They're not involved with the okay, youth corps. You know that type of thing. So I hear you. Let's you know. get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Hand it along. So that the question is still leadership. That's right. Leadership That's in right. The yeah. Yeah. Money yeah. management. Leadership and money management. No, because leadership is no money. You know, would, would us be for the um, Sonia Ballroom over, that whole building, that whole complex over, and they've been promising a long time to get it, but we got it, and that's all for him. Yeah. Well, we got a big crew around here, so we have to stay in touch. Uh, Bashir, you can put that down whenever you like and just go to, go to work. You know what I mean? Do some serious work. Some of us can come this way because these are the same. About seven, eight translations, I put them on the table. I asked him, what version do you uh, accept yeah, okay. the Word of God? Right, right. He said, none of them. He thought I was getting smart, so he was going to get smart. He said, none of them. 
So I said, we can check them all and throw them in the garbage, including the one you have there, right. which is one of these. Right. So now he changed his mind and says, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> you see? So we set them up like this here. Which of these books here is God's word? Neither one of them has got the same information. Neither one. So we know it's in the Bible. Do you have a witness come to the door? I said, look, we can't talk religion at the door. If you got a few minutes, come on in. I take my cookie off at the door. I don't let them know. You right. see? I open the door. You ask them, come on in. So they're willing to come in there. Right. So I lead them up here and sit them down in the hornet's nest. <laughs> Once they get there, I got their whole document on the wall there. I got a whole thing for Jehovah's Witnesses. Right. And I sit them down here to finish. Right. I had two Mormons here. One of them almost cried because I'm sitting right here. Right. Mormons. Came here to give me some belly. <laughs> <laughs> so they in, the Mormons are now in. They, they, they travel, you see. They're in Salt Lake, but they Salt have to go out in uh, different oh. places for two years. Who did? 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 And want to know if you'd like to have a videotape. So I think, yeah, they're going to give me a videotape. I said, yeah. They said, well, look, better still, we got a guy in the area who'll bring it by and show it to you. So they trick you. Once they get you committed, they say, you think you get the videotape. Right. So I said, well, good. Send them all by. Right. Good. Right. And I told them while we're talking, I'll just make a duplication of the tape also. Yeah. So when they came by, they sat and I let them talk and all that. And I got all their Mormon business right here. Everything is here for them. And uh, after they talked, that was the end of the ball game. So they figured they'd come back another day and work on me again. The next day they was almost crying. The other guy that was with him, he didn't know anything. He had confessed that he was new. So I had to blast him. Pathetic, you know? But uh, I like to set them up. You know, get them into the net, in the, in the wet, and then blast them. Once they get here, they know they got trouble. Okay? I got every, every Bible that they can want. Every Bible they can want. As a matter of fact, this might be something here. It's a new Bible they got. It's not new, it's old. But it's a uh, it's a red lettered Old Testament. You ever seen one? No. Red letters in Old Testament. I've only seen the red letters in New Testament. Well, this is red letters in the Old Testament, and then the text is supposed to be prophesying about Jesus and in the concordance things that Jesus said. So I use this against them also when they want to say that certain things are prophecies and so forth. So when they have read that it's here. Like Proverbs 8, 1, chapter 22, 22. Oh, this is everything that thing is because of Jesus. Yeah. yeah. It's in red. Yeah. yeah. Red letters. Right. Hmm. So if you read Deuteronomy 18, 18, 19, it's in red letters. Right. 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 Okay. Red letters. <laughs> the first time I see this, mm -hmm. right yeah. So it's now, perfect. when Schofield, in yeah. his translation, right. refers to Proverbs chapter eight, verses twenty-two, twenty-three, and so forth, right. as being referring to Jesus, it's not a red thing. And if you look at Leviticus, like, like I was saying again, Leviticus chapter chapter 19, mm -hmm. verse 18, you'll see a fabricated verse that they got there, where they claim that, that, uh, that Moses said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Right. But right. Jesus said, I say unto you, love thy, love thy enemy. Right. You give them so and so. But that's a fabrication. Moses never said hate your enemies, but you didn't even have to say that. Never, no way in the whole of the Bible. No, it's fabricated. Forged, forged verse. So with these kind of things, we get them with all these different translations. Now, you know, Moffat, Moffat, James Moffat's Bible here, right. he says that Jesus became the Son of God the day he was baptized. Right. On that day. Today, right. have I become that father, James Moffat. Right. He's one of the guys that sat on the board for the RSV. Right. Moffat. And then we got the good speed. Right. He follows suit with him. It's a new right. translation. Right. You know, what they like to say around them. So we got everything for them when they show up. Whatever you got, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it, no problem. And then the Jehovah's Witnesses, if I can sit them down for a minute, I'll show them a documentary by some of their elders 
right. 30 years in, in their religion who had come out now and blasted the movie. I showed it to one lady out there where I work. She came up and saw my son a paper. And so I asked her, I wasn't interested in the paper, I was being polite. I asked her, I said, well, look, you got a hardcover book called Contradictions of the Bible. I said, do you have that? She said, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. itself. You see, she wouldn't be defensive right away. So I now had to deal with that subject. <laughs> you see, so when I began to show her that, and, I, and then she had a friend reading, the friend read, and then closed it back up, and went through it. I said, well, look, then you find those verses. And then I said, well, look, I got my monitor and my band. I have a oh, band my God, where I show the, the, the tapes from the band, the monitor, the speakers, and the VCR, everything right there at the band, you see. So I said, let me put this tape in and show you what your elders, your scholars, 30 years, not like you do one year, two years, but these are the people who make decisions for you, you see, what they have to say about your movie. And when I brought that tape out, she called she called those people apostates and flew down the street and met the other crew and told them, this guy down here, not even go around it, so they didn't come around for the whole day. The Jehovah Witnesses, you see, so they want to see this document from here. Last day activity. <laughs> where, where is that one? It's right there. Witnesses for Jehovah got two of them. The Christians put them out there. Protestants. Oh. Against the Jehovah Witnesses.
one day he tells you, say, I don't want to see your face again. <laughs> I will put a bullet through you yeah. or he accepts your stuff. There's no other way. He was trying to say, look, I don't want to see your face. Yeah. Or accept your stuff. But we are not doing that. Yeah. We can send the same stuff. I used to do that. Yeah. Follow up with that. Follow up. Yeah. Yeah. Follow up. Yeah. 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 Follow up. Yeah. And so if the bullet bashing, you finish. Nobody ever comes again. Yeah. <laughs> Now this brother and I, we went to this big church uh, uh, in the summer, this big uh, um, Christian, so-called Christian scholar. Uh, he wrote this big outline about Jesus being God, quoting all of the verses and so forth. So somebody told us, and we went up there to see them. Now we went into the church, they knew who we were, so they escorted us right up to the front to sit down. So now when the reverend sees us there, he begins to change the dialogue right in the middle of the speech. He begins to talk about how he's not interested in reading no other material. And then he starts talking about the Muslims and this and that. And he's not, if it's not in the Bible, he don't want to hear it. And all this now he's, he's putting into his dialogue because he sees us sitting there. You don't know what we're there for. So after he gives his speech, uh, one of the deacons came up to us and asked us if we want to have any uh, questions for the reverend. So I told him I gave him a card and I said, look, we're here. We got, we heard it. We got this outline that he did. And we did not challenge him to an open debate. An open debate on this issue. So he took it up to the reverend on stage. And the reverend invited us up on the stage. We have a conference here for a few minutes. And so he accepted. He gave us a chance to come to the podium and address the audience. So we addressed the audience for a few minutes and told them what we were there about. And he came and also said that we had brought this to them. And then we told them that we were going to deal with the issue from the Bible. From the Bible. A lot of it from and he told his congregation that he was going to oh, yeah. ground. Shoot him. Shoot him. Yeah, and uh, yeah. so it's normal we haven't heard anything from him again. So now you put that out there to your congregation, and now you begin to say, we didn't hear from him again. So we hope that this is what now we start to do. So we have churches, especially when we have Bible studies. You know, we don't want to sit down. Your Bible studies, not for your church studies. We don't want that. It's good to pray and stand up. It's not that. You give a lecture. You know, we don't want to sit here. We have a Bible study, we go into there, we have the Bible study, and then we can answer your questions. And our methodology is ask questions based on the answers. We really know the answers. So we answer the questions based on that. We don't want you to tell us nothing. We don't know. We want you to give you a certain thing. And so this is what we're doing with our methodology to get into the church. To deal with you. The only thing, like you said, we have to strengthen our follow up program. It's a new, uh, new uh, method. That's one. Carry on. This is since I got this experience. Of course. So we, uh, of course. we live in. We said, okay. We've done the job. We've set aside. Okay. You know? yes, yes. Of course, we've done the job. 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 We've and I had heard about him, and I was really curious. And when I got a chance, I met him here. But I didn't get a chance to talk with him. But and then I began to really read him and follow his, uh, his works, you see. And so now I said again that this type of activity and all this time, we can't just die down and stop when he's not able to carry on. You see? So this is why now we're training ourselves and training other people with this methodology, you see, to go out and deal with it. You know, uh, when we came uh, in 1977. Yeah. Um, and maybe that you could see, you know, the American is a good crowd to work. And the people that would really uh, put their ball on the fire, you know, it would be the Afro Americans of America. Because his experience uh, could, could read this. Because they have the militants. Yeah. You don't require militants. Oh, yeah. It's it's my people haven't got it. My people are. I don't know if it's still there for God. The first lot of people was the was the Cape Townians. Yes, sir. The Cape Malays of Cape Town, of South Africa. They had the Sorry. same militancy. And the second lot of people uh, in Cape Town. I used to boast. I came. I said the most militant Muslim government in the world. Mm -hmm. The Malays of the Cape. They still are. Uh, when I came here, I said, no, we'll be second best. <laughs> There's no liar from that first time when you came. 
fly up there with the white frame. Yeah. The yeah. first time when you yeah. came here yeah. and the meetings that you yeah. had at the right, university right, right, that you were right. He's got the fire, I was yeah. astonished. Yeah. Okay. I, I remember when we went to yeah. Columbia, Indianapolis. Columbia, 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 Columbia,
we wanted to demonstrate and show is we have to become a part of uh, the Muslim community in the Queen's uh, International Research and Occupation Center for a law as a merciful God. And we record this. Let me just run it back for a minute. Because we had a Christian, you know, there's a Christian van that comes out there. As soon as we finish feed, feeding them, they take the people off the church. Yeah. So we had a dialogue out there with this. Uh, yeah. Great. Then they sort them out. Whoever looks stronger, yeah. they take them through another program. Mm -hmm. The rest they throw back. And then once they got them trained, they send them out to take care of the work. And that's what they do. And then they get them jobs, and then you have to pay tax. So it's economical for them. Mm -hmm. They're not wasting their time. Well, probably missionary would follow. They got a whole thing about yeah. it. We're having crucifixes with uh, Jesus still hanging. It's a thing between Christians where. You shouldn't even wear a cross with Jesus still so hanging because Jesus came off for the cross. So, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's a whole... You see, this is the whole thing, but look, Jesus never looked. If you look at Jesus' words in the Bible, he never taught none of this stuff, none of this at all. This was doctrine of the faith. Right. And different councils, 300 some odd years after the time of the council. See, you probably heard about that. The council of the and the council of the Congress of the Comprehensive State. So now these doctrines came about later on. They were not never taught by Jesus, you see. Jesus said, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle of the law shall in any way anybody's fault. And he said, that whosoever, anybody, if you don't forget, you know, like Paul, when Jesus made these statements, St. Paul never existed in Jesus' knowledge. And he never knew about the St. Paul. So he said, whosoever shall break one of the least of the commandments that I'm preaching here, all shall teach men to do so, shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do them and teach others shall be called great. Now Paul came along later on, never had heard Jesus say these words, and did just what Jesus said he shouldn't do. And now this is what the most of the humanity is following the doctrines of Paul, as opposed to the teachings of Christ. So like the Bible says, letting alone the commandments of God, you follow the traditions of men. Follow me? So we have to be careful about these kind of things. About whose words we're going to follow. And the, and the, and the, the truth of the, of the, of the, of the words. As far as we can. Not only that, but Jesus never came for anybody. Look, 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 look. Jesus only came for a certain group of people. Isn't that right? Jesus, according to the gospel, he said in Matthew chapter 5, verse uh, 10, he told the disciples that you'll not enter the way of the Gentiles. You know what the term Gentile means? It means non Jews. It's the term Goyan, non Jews. He said he told the disciples, you'll not enter the way of the Gentiles. Or any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Go so ye rather the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that's what he told his disciples to go to. And he said, so what about you, Jesus? Who are you going to? He said, I am not saying I'm going to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You see what I'm saying? And this is what his doctrine. Even when people came to him to be healed, he said, it's not me to take the children bread and cast them to the dogs. Right. You know, this is what Jesus is teaching. So he had 12 disciples from 12 tribes. And then when you go into the book of Revelation, which is supposed to be an apocalyptic uh, view, it t teaches there that Jesus will have his disciples with him, and they'll sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of the house of Israel. But not you and I. For you and I, he said to something else. And John chapter 16, verses 13, 14, 15, is that I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Now, being when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. But he shall not speak for himself, for whatsoever he shall fear, that shall he speak. 
But I do have to look out to find who is this individual that Jesus was prophesying that would come for the whole of humanity. And we as Muslims, we say that this individual was the holy prophet of Islam, Muhammad, who came 500 and some odd years. And the Christians say it's the Messiah. No, no, no. No, no. no. The Christians say it's the Holy Ghost who came on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, verse 4. See, this is what the Christians will tell you. And we argue them that that's not the case. Because Jesus said, it is expedient to you that I go away, but if I go not away, the comforter, who they call the paracletos in Greek, will not come. But if I go, I will send him. But we know that the, the Holy Ghost has been with Jesus all the time, isn't that right? Yeah. As a matter of fact, it says that he was conceived of the Holy Ghost. You see, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Okay, so look. And not only that, Jesus, when he sent his disciples out in their, in their mission of healing and preaching, he said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Take it. And we know that Elizabeth, John's mother, was filled with the Holy Ghost. And that John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. So this Holy Ghost that they were talking about, Jesus said, I have to go before he comes, was already there, not the Holy Ghost. This is another individual. And not only that, the term when Jesus said, uh, I will pray the Father that he will give you another, you know, English term of another. Yeah, I know. I the Greek term is Alon. Alon. Okay. Alon. Yeah, okay. And that term means another, another of the same kind. You see, the Greek term for another of a different kind, like the Holy Ghost, is Petros. Like where you get the word homo, uh, 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 uh sexual. Or homosexual. Yeah. I thought they were saying homosexual. Yeah. Well, that's an option that, you know, somebody who likes the, uh, uh, I mean, the, the same kind. Uh, heterosexual, right? Heterosexual is of a different kind. So heteros, we come from men, you see? But right. now Jesus used the term alon, meaning that I'm going to pray to God and I'll give you somebody of the same kind that I am. Thank you. 
and then they get personality conflicts mm -hmm. and all that, and then the whole business falls down the tube. Mm -hmm. So I don't function like that. No, no I'm just saying yeah. because I agree with you a lot. I'm of a retired businessman. All right. So this is the way I started my business. I ran my business and retired after 18 years of doing business. So one man operation, and I admire Sheikh Ahmed D that. Not so much to say that he's a one man operation, but I do believe that he started his operation with a one man show and he runs his show like that. You see, in other words, it didn't seem that he was dependent on other people to give the dollar to make his program work. You see, other people see the good of it and they latch on. You see, and this is the point you latch on because you see the benefit, but if you don't latch on, it's not going to slow this operation down. That's the point. So, I'm saying it's uh, in your honesty, integrity, and, and uh, dedication. If you have that, you know, yeah, that's it. You will be able that's to succeed. It. If that's you are, if you are devoted to the cause, if you are functioning for nothing gets stopped. Okay. If you have Allah with you, you don't you know you, you can have so many obstacles, people running you down, but that shouldn't really make any difference. You should still carry on and believe in that. Okay. You can yeah, succeed. Uh, this brother Abdul Baki here, brother Bashiri. You know, this brother here, like I said again, he'll drive down from Boston just like he just drove from around the corner yeah. to help any cause that he sees as good. You see, the brother here, you know, it's that kind of thing. So these are brothers that we can count on. Not to say that anything about other people when I'm functioning. I know certain people that feel the same way I do about whatever we're doing. If it's a good cause or the right cause, and hopefully we try to analyze to see, and then we do it. And I can count on certain people to deal with that. But if you start talking big numbers, a lot yeah. of people are yeah. to get nothing done. Let them see the good. And then if they like, they can uh, join no. in. You see, so we said, well, look, let's set an example for this here. We do one day. This is what we can do. And uh, coming along, we started with 100 people. Last week, we had, what, 200 and some odd people, almost 200 people. Yeah. We ran out of food, you yeah. see. But the people are orderly. Now, these are people who came through jail, murderers, rapists, or whatever it might have been. But they're orderly. Mm. They see the Muslims there, and they have big respect, yeah. you see, for the Muslims. And we don't have no problem with them. You see, police, everybody walk by, people are now coming over off the street, and they're the look and so forth, and they see that they admire this effort, you see. And so we're not doing it for show or for people, you mm. see, but the idea is that we do want to give Islam a good name also. We want you to see that Muslims are concerned not to just sit and preach to people and talk from the background, but we are on the front line dealing with things. And so we deal with this, and we deal with other cases also. You see, when, it's, when they're talking about abortion, should they or should they not? I'd like to give the Islamic perspective on abortion. What about capital punishment? Which you don't know. Today you kill people, next week you say you made a mistake. Mm -hmm. You see? What does your book say? Remind you of that. You see? And your book is saying the same thing my book is saying. And this is what the point is. And this is the Muslim viewpoint. You see? Never mind this thing, homosexuality. What does your book say? Old and New Testament. It says the same verdict on homosexuality. You see what I'm saying? So don't play these games with the people in the society. If you believe in God, you say in one God, or in God we trust. You see. So if this is what you trust in, then implement the rules. You say, "Thy will be done, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as in heaven." So let it be that way, and not just give lip service. You see, and this is what we like to remind them from a comparative religion. <laughs> we come tell them what Islam say. They like to fight it off, like what you say. You know, we point out to you, like you say with Rushdie, look what he's doing to you. What he's doing to you, never mind me. Look what he's doing to you. When you see what he's doing to you, you'll stop. I won't have to worry. It's so this is what we like to do. We show it's them look. This is what your books say, right? And our books say the same thing. Yeah, but somebody again, well, look, don't, you, know, you know, I like the religion, but you know, I don't like this thing about uh, men can have more than one wife. You mm -hmm. see. And so rather than get on the defensive thing, I like to talk to you right from your book. What do your books say about it? Yes. See, maybe you didn't know. Now your books say the same thing my book says. It's no problem now. See, now I can begin to tell you what mine say. But if I start telling you what mine say, divorce from yours, you think this is something you can't live with. And your own book is saying the same thing. Okay, brothers, we don't want to overpower you. Privilege to be with you. Thank you, brothers. 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 Yeah, I was just going to ask you. Did you, did you got a fax here? You don't have a number? You don't have a number?